Hello everyone and welcome to episode 4. In this episode, we're going to make this bookshelf. Let's get it started. The first step is to import the blueprints which you learned in the previous episode. You can download this file for free from our art station or Gumroad page, which I'll link in the description. The practice files for this course are updated weekly with each new episode. Please download them and come back so we can continue. Alright, I'll delete the default cube, press 1 on the numpad to go to the front view, then press Shift A, go to image, and click reference, and select the front image. Press 3 on the numpad to go to the right view, and select the right image, and finally press 7 on the numpad to go to the top view, and select the top image. Now, with middle click and drag, switch to perspective mode, and move the blueprints a bit so they don't get in the way. To make sure these images don't get selected and bother us during modeling, we can make them unselectable using the Outliner panel. The Outliner is a simple panel that lists every item in our Blender scene. Every item we create gets added to this list. Each item in the Outliner has its own icon. For example, the items with the image icon here are our blueprints. In the Outliner, you can easily select items, delete, or rename them by double-clicking on the name or pressing F2. You can also rename items by hovering over the viewport, pressing F2, and changing the name. But make sure the object is selected first, okay? The outliner is an important part that you'll get more familiar with later, so don't worry about it right now, okay? Now if I hover over the eye icon in the outliner and click and drag down, you'll see the eye icon closes and the blueprints hide in the scene. The shortcut for this is H. To unhide, you can use Alt-H. But we don't want that. We want to reference images to be unselectable. To do this, click on the filter icon at the top and in the menu, activate selectable under the restriction panel. Now you'll see a selectable icon for each item and by deactivating it, the items become unselectable. You'll see I can't select the blueprints right now. In this episode, we'll frequently switch between object mode and edit mode. If you are new to these modes, it's perfectly normal to find it a bit confusing at first, but don't worry, by the end of this course, as we model each object together, the differences will become clear. To help you keep track, I'll highlight whenever we enter edit mode with a red bar at the top of the screen. This episode is particularly important, so be sure to practice and build the model yourself. And if you get stuck or have any questions, just drop a comment and I'll be there to help. Now let's start modeling the bookshelf legs. The mesh that resembles the legs the most is a cube, so press Shift A and select the cube. As you can see, the cube is added in the outliner as well. So, outliner, viewport are somehow linked to each other. Press 1 to switch the front view, press Alt Z to activate X ray mode so you can see the reference image better. Now, please pay special attention to what I'm about to say. Modeling the legs of this shelf is really simple, but there are two main methods for modeling in Blender that you must understand because not knowing them can be very frustrating later on. Therefore, we'll model the legs using one method and the shelves using another. You'll understand the difference at the end. The first method is the one you're already familiar with and we used it to model the trash can in the previous episode. Select the cube, press G, then X to constrain the movement to the X-axis and move the cube to about here. You see this small yellow dot in the center of the cube? It's called the object origin. Please pay attention to it, we'll work with it later. I'll try to place this dot in the center of the leg and click to drop it. Then bring the mouse here, press S and resize it according to the reference. Good. Now press S again, then Z and move the mouse to match the top part with the top of the leg. Press tap and click and drag to select the bottom vertices Make sure you're in X-ray mode, otherwise the back vertices won't get selected. Switch to perspective mode to make sure the back vertices are selected, okay? Press 1 again, press G, then Z, and move the vertices down to match the bottom of the leg. Alright, press 3 to go to the right view, press tap to return to object mode, press G and move it to the left and the Y axis to match it with the reference, okay? Press 7 to go to the top view, and check the position of the leg from this angle too. Alright, now the cube matches the reference in all views. We've successfully made one leg, okay? Now we can duplicate it for the remaining legs. There are two common methods for duplicating in Blender. 
One is simple duplicate, which you can do by pressing Shift D. After pressing, you can move the duplicated mesh wherever you want and click to place it. Remember, if you right click or press escape after pressing Shift D, the duplicate doesn't cancel but stays in the previous location. You can see this in the outliner as well. So press G and move the mouse to see the duplicated mesh. So be aware of this. Please pay very, very, very close attention. If you duplicate in object mode, the objects will be duplicated separately. And as you can see, they are added in the outliner. However, if you duplicate in edit mode, all duplicates occur within the same mesh and a new mesh isn't created. This has its own specific use, which you'll understand in future episodes. So always make sure whether you are in object mode or edit mode before duplicating. Also, keep an eye on the outliner to see what's happening. The second method is linked duplicate, known as instance in other software. Instead of Shift D, press Alt D. This is an alternative way to duplicate, similar to how we used Alt S as an alternative way of scaling. So press Alt D, move it to the side and click to drop it. If I select either one and press tab to enter edit mode, you'll see any changes made to one also affect the linked object. Very cool. Press tab again, select this mesh, press tab and modify it. You see they are linked and changes happen to both. Just keep in mind that this linking effect doesn't occur in object mode for move, rotate and scale operations. It only happens in edit mode where any changes you make are linked. So if I perform these operations in edit mode, you'll see that they affect the instances or linked objects as well, okay? And do a few steps. Now, to break the link between them, make sure you're in object mode because we need to use the menu at the top, which is different in edit mode and object mode. So ensure the object you want is selected, then go to the object menu, select relations, and then make single user. And finally, you can choose object and data. But since I'm sure you might forget this, right click on it and select assign shortcut. And now we can set a shortcut for it. Cool, right? I recommend using Alt Shift D, which isn't used by any other operation and is a good choice. After setting this shortcut, you can see it next to the object and data. Okay, now let's test it. Press Alt Shift D and this window will open. You'll see that object and object data are checked. Click make single and in edit mode, you'll see that these two objects are no longer linked. Okay, let's go back to the object mode and delete this one and let's continue. Press one on the numpad, select the mesh and press Alt D to create a linked duplicate. Move it and place it according to the reference, like this. Now press three to go to the right view, select both objects, press Alt D and adjust their positions. Now all four legs are made and linked. Note that you could also use Shift D here, which wouldn't make much difference, but we used linked duplicate to ensure that if we change our minds later and want to modify the legs, it will be easier and we won't have to make changes to each leg individually. Now let's move on to the shelves. This time we'll use the second method for modeling these shelves. Simply add a cube, press one to go to the front view. Now, instead of changing the object scale in object mode, go to edit mode and make all transformations there. Okay, press A to select all the vertices, press S, then Z, and scale the mesh on this axis. Move it up and adjust the scale to match the reference. Okay, now go to the top view and adjust the scale on this axis as well, like this. Okay, go back to the front view, press Alt D to create a linked duplicate and move it down. Now, a cool trick. You can press Shift R to repeat the last operation to keep the same spacing and repeat the operation as many times as needed. Okay, and do that because we only need three shelves and all done with the shelves. I'll explain the difference between the two methods at the end of the video after finishing these sections. For now, let's complete our model. From the Add menu, select UV Sphere, right click and choose Shade Smooth, press G and position the object origin at the center of this part. All right, press S to scale it down, adjust its position. Okay, you know the rest. Press Alt D and move it to the other side. In the top view, select both and adjust their positions. With both selected, press Alt D and place them on the opposite side. And that's done. 
Now, let's make these cylinders on the side. Add a cylinder, right click and choose Shade Auto Smooth, press R, then X, type 90 and press Enter. In the right view, adjust its size, like this. In the front view, position it according to the reference, press Alt D and move it down. Select both and use duplicate linked and place them on the opposite side too. Done. Our bookshelf model is almost finished and now we just need to add some fine details. One of these details is to bevel the sharp edges to make them look more natural, okay? As you know, in reality, no object has perfectly sharp edges. Even the edge of a knife has a slight bevel if you look closely. Surprising, isn't it? This time, we're going to use a different method for bevel. I select one of these legs and then in the properties panel and click on this wrench icon known as modifier properties. Then I'll click on add modifier and select bevel from the generate section. As you can see, the bevel has now been added as a modifier here and it has the same properties as the bevel tool. The major difference is that this bevel is applied non-destructively, meaning if we make other changes in the software, the bevel stays in place and we can modify it anytime. We can easily toggle it on and off by clicking on this icon the display modifier in viewport icon and see the before and after. Isn't that great? The modifiers section is very interesting and useful and we'll get more familiar with it over time. But why does the bevel seem to be applied incorrectly here? This goes back to our initial modeling method. Let's apply the bevel to the shelf we modeled using the second method. I'll select the top shelf and again click on add modifier, then generate and then bevel. Now, I'll press the forward slash on the numpad, and don't worry, all objects are still there. We've just entered local mode, which means this object is isolated so we can focus on it. It's a very useful shortcut. If you press the forward slash again, you see all objects return, okay? Now I'll press it again, and here I'll increase the number of segments in bevel modifier. I'll right click on the object and select shade auto smooth. Did you see what happened? Shade Auto Smooth was actually a modifier. Really? Now it's revealed itself to us. Okay, I'll reduce the amount and set it to a very low number. Remember to hold the shift key while dragging to make the adjustment slower. I think this amount is enough. Now if I click on this icon to toggle the modifier on and off, you can see its effect. It's a very subtle change, but it has a significant impact on the final output, making your 3D prop model look more attractive and realistic. And most importantly, you can see the bevel is correctly applied. Now, I'll press the forward slash again to bring back the objects. And don't worry about the shading of these two lower shells. Since they are instances, they have inherited the shade auto smooth, okay? Note that the bevel modifier and other modifiers aren't applied to instances except for shade auto smooth. However, you can see the effect of shade auto smooth on the instance duplicates but the modifier itself isn't present on those duplicates. This might seem a bit confusing, but don't worry too much about it right now. Let's go back to the legs. I'll select this leg and press the forward slash to go into local mode. If I change the amount and segments here, you can see it doesn't give us the desired effect. If you click on object properties, you can see the problem in the scale section. What do you think is the issue? I'll press the forward slash and this time select the shelf object and then leg. Did you notice the difference? That's right. The scale of the shelf is set to 1, but the scale of the leg isn't. Whenever you apply a bevel or any other modifier and don't get the result you want, the first place to check is here. Now we need to change the scale of this leg to 1. But if I do that, the object will revert to a cube shape. So this isn't the way to do it. To change the scale to 1 while keeping the object's shape as it is, we need to use the apply operation. Okay, I'll undo. To apply the scale, I'll press Ctrl A and select Scale. A message appears saying that this object is linked to other objects in the scene and asks if we want to make it a single user by applying. Remember we went to the Object menu, then Relations, and defined a shortcut for Make Single User for Object and Data? By clicking Apply, this operation is executed, breaking the link between this object and its instances, which we don't want. To prevent this, select all the objects that are linked first, then press Ctrl A and select Scale. Now you can see the message doesn't appear and the scale has been changed to 1 
and the bevel is correctly applied. Now, just select the object, go back to the modifiers section, and adjust the bevel as needed. That's it. Finally, right click and select Shade Auto Smooth. Great. The last step is to learn how to copy the modifiers to other objects. Because if we have to select each object individually and apply the modifiers one by one and copy the exact values, it would be very time consuming. There are two ways to copy modifiers. In both methods, the order of selecting objects is very important. Always select the objects without the modifiers first and the last selection should be the object with the modifier you want to copy. This last selected object is highlighted differently and is called the active object. Now in the modifier properties, click on this small arrow and select copy to select it. Now let's move to the second method. I'll select these two shelves and finally click on the object with the modifier. Then I can use the shortcut control L, the link transfer data menu appears and here I select copy modifiers. And that's the second method. And guys, We've completed the second model together. Congratulations again, and I'll see you in the next episode.